Noticing a growing number of crimes provoked by methamphetamine use, the court reporter for the Brandon Sun started investigating. By the time Erin Dubois was finished, she had crafted an unflinching, moving, and deeply researched look at the terrible human toll from the sort of addiction crisis one would not expect to find in a city as small as Brandon. Judges said her powerful series of heartbreaking stories outlined the devastation wrought by crystal meth. They said Du Bois had performed an invaluable service to her community and showed how a single reporter's quest can force governments to improve their woeful efforts to cope with serious social problems. A year-long investigation by Grant LaFleche of the St. Catharines Standard uncovered a political conspiracy to manipulate the hiring of Niagara Region's top bureaucrat and a secret contract worth more than a million dollars. LaFleche produced more than 50 stories on the subject, despite pressure from politicians who tried to discredit him. Judges said the corruption, cronyism, skullduggery, and secrecy he uncovered might never have come to light without his digging. LaFleche's work ultimately helped change the face of local government. When elections took place last fall, the main person implicated was humiliated at the polls. His crony began negotiating his exit, and most of the councillors who had let it all slide lost their own seats. Greg Mercer's Rubber Town series in the Waterloo Region Record is a striking example of how hard-hitting journalism can make a difference. Despite extensive anecdotal evidence that rubber industry workers had been exposed to toxic chemicals that resulted in significant clusters of cancer, Ontario's Workplace Safety Board had rejected almost all compensation claims. The workers seemed out of options until Mercer began digging into the issue. His dramatic stories prompted the Safety Board to order a review of all past rejections, giving surviving workers and victims' families hope for the first time. Judges said this all came about because of Mercer's detailed, descriptive, and informative probe into the heartbreaking stories of the rubber workers and an inadequate compensation system. And the award for local reporting goes to Greg Mercer of the Waterloo Region Record. Thank you. This is a this is a huge honor, and it's uh, it's just great to be here tonight, celebrating our industry, surrounded by so many great journalists. Um, I don't have a whole lot of prepared notes to say, so I just want to um, speak from the heart. I want to share this with Virginia McKenzie. She is the first uh, the first person that I profiled in our series. She's an 82 year old uh, widow. She lost her husband to cancer 12 years ago. She's always believed that uh, his death was caused by uh, his job. We're not, uh, we're not done with our reporting on Rubber Town, and there's a lot of work left to be done on occupational disease in this country, but uh, uh, this is a positive start. I'm really happy for this recognition. Um, Virginia had a, a grade eight education. Like a lot of people in her generation, she, she left school to work in factories, but she had a very uh, refined sense of justice. And she felt very strongly that what happened to rubber workers uh, was wrong. And, that was the spirit that we, uh, we tackled this series with. Um, I want to thank my editor-in-chief, uh, Jim Pulling, who has created a culture in the newsroom uh, to encourage reporters to keep pushing and keep digging and to, to not let up when we might otherwise, have, uh, we might otherwise let, a, let a story slide. I have to thank uh, Neil Ballantyne and Rod Fikettrick and, uh, and Ron Reuter for their support and their guidance throughout this and, uh, and of course, uh, last but not least, my, my wife. It's not always easy to be married to a journalist, and uh, she has supported me throughout this. It's not a nine to five job. Um, without you, I couldn't do this, Kate, and, uh, and thank you for doing this today. Thank you.